Now you might love or completely despise AI, but Creative Boom spoke to 25 of the leading professionals in the graphic design industry to see exactly how they're using AI and where it might be going next year and throughout the next decade. Oh, and side note, the eye tracking logo is pretty cool. But let's check in with those professional design agencies and the first comment we're going to look at is from Oliver UK. They have clients including Axe, Marmite and The Guardian newspaper to name a few. And they've also won a bunch of design awards which is, well, always good. But their creative director says, We've been using AI for years, especially on innovation projects that rely on high-end personalized and automated content for customer experiences at scale. But generative AI that's a different story entirely. So yeah, I wonder what is the different story when it comes to generative AI. Let's read on. When it properly burst onto the scene in summer 2022 with Midjourney, etc., it caught the imagination of our creatives right away. They could instantly grasp the potential and couldn't help getting their hands dirty. Since then, our creatives have used generative AI as part of their inspiration and ideation process. So what I can gather from this first comment is they've been using AI to create ideas and concepts and to develop those concepts in quick and fast time. And that is, of course, humans working alongside AI for the ideation process. But in a different article, Billy Seabrook from IBM echoes this sentiment and talks about how 1,600 designers at IBM use Adobe Generative AI to create ideas and variations really, really fast. And this is all for advertising campaigns via IBM. But really, 1,600 graphic designers work at IBM. That seems like quite a lot. But yeah, these big agencies and these top-level designers, they seem to be using AI for creating ideas and streamlining the concept creation process. But it seems that way so far anyway. But are they really using AI platforms that we have access to, such as Midjourney and so on? Well, firstly, take a look at the clients the design studio Billion Dollar Boy actually has worked with. We're talking about Heineken, Ray-Ban, L'Oreal, PepsiCo, and the A-star list just goes on and on and on. Well, this agency said this. It's all about communicating intangible ideas in our heads to brands on the screen. AI tools like Midjourney have streamlined this ideation process and brought creative ideas to life. For example, we visualize this fictional character shown on screen right now, blended with a real-life influencer, and this was to help brand partners understand the concept more easily. So obviously here, they use Midjourney to put the face of the influencer onto the image. And if you look closely, the image is pretty crude and not very good. But like they said, this isn't a final design, it's just a quick way to show the clients an idea or a concept. So as you can see, AI is becoming a huge part of the graphic design world and also the process of working on graphic design projects. But it's not yet at a point where it's completely taking over. But saying that, I have actually personally noticed how important it is to understand AI and use it as a graphic designer. And so one way I've made sure to keep up is to leverage the classes on Skillshare based around AI. The internet is awash and swamped with millions and millions of classes or courses on different things. And sometimes it can be overwhelming and also it might seem a bit untrustworthy. Skillshare, however, is a place that you can learn the exact skills that you need or want in 2024, and that is alongside any support that you might require. Skillshare has thousands of classes led by industry pros in the fields of design, productivity, business, and a lot more, including, as I said, AI. And I've been finding that very beneficial indeed. But here's the really neat thing. Skillshare has these things called learning paths, and these are hand-picked classes that run in succession, reinforcing the activity of learning. This learning path here has five classes across six hours, all based around leveraging ChatGPT. And you can join the learning journey by joining Skillshare and picking up those new and fresh skills today. But the first 500 people who do sign up using my link in the description box below will actually get a one month free trial to Skillshare. So do check that out down below. And also thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. But hold up, wait there. It seems like Billion Dollar Boy have stole the eye tracking logo from Creative Boom. Or did Creative Boom steal it from these guys? That's a side plot we're not going to investigate right now in today's video. Instead, let's listen to what some of these institutional design agencies have to say about the limitations of AI. Now, Dan Sharat from the Poppins Design Studio has had some issues working with AI. Now he says, because of our name, Poppins, we play with the umbrella imagery quite a lot. And that's something AI can't actually yet seem to get right, hands and umbrellas. 
Another example is that we're trying to get things to appear as if they're floating in one of our proposals, and AI just couldn't grasp that concept. Eventually, we had to prompt it to image things were hanging from ceiling by string, and then we just photoshopped a string out of the image. So even when you're just making something for a design process or something that doesn't have to be polished and finished, AI is still falling short in some of the situations. But there are some instances where design agencies have been using AI to make finished final design results. Yeah, it is happening. One example comes from the global marketing agency Iris. Now they've worked with such brands as Adidas, Samsung, and so on. Anyway, they say this. We run regular AI Explorer competitions where cross-agency teams use different tools. One of the winning teams created Polymers, a virtual influencer oblivious to the destructive presence of single-use plastics in the world she inhabits. So basically they created a fake social influencer based around humor using AI. And let's take a look at that right now. Actually, it's obvious these are AI created, but I'm willing to let that slide because in this instance, I feel like it works pretty well. I think the concept here is quite funny, and yet at the same time, it's justified in its cause. But I do feel like the people who are creating these images with AI could be a little more imaginative because things do look a bit samey after a while. You know, it's that same old thing of just getting a landmark, throwing some plastic bottles around and having the influencer in the front and center. Maybe they could do something like having the influencer build a wall of rubbish next to the Great Wall of China. That could be a good concept, you know, just maybe be a bit more creative with it. There is a danger, however, that as designers, we rely and lean on AI too much and become complacent. And this is perfectly illustrated by this next design agency, Too Many Dreams. They say, one of their clients used ChatGPT to draft a press release, which on first read sounded fantastic. But when they read through it a second time, they quickly realized that whilst the words sounded right and the sentences were constructed properly, they didn't actually make any sense whatsoever. And I think the branding specialists at Denomination perfectly explain things further here. As we move forward with AI, it's important that we remember it's a tool for us to bring ideas to life. It's not an idea generator itself. The trap for designers, and not just the young ones, is to use AI to come up with their ideas for them, in the same way that going to Pinterest or Google to trawl for ideas. Avoiding this temptation and instead utilizing AI to bring to life original ideas in a powerful way is our goal and it's something we're already seeing the benefits of. As designers, we absolutely have to keep in touch with our creative side and our design thinking mind because if we stop using it, it's kind of like a muscle where it becomes weak and we become complacent. And that's not somewhere we want to be heading as creative designers. Canva has hinted at something that might go against that though, something that some people might find a tad disturbing. They say this, Generative AI is the core to our productive vision and our strategy, and we expect that it will actually fuel every step of the creation and editing process. This will make it easy for anyone to bring the idea in their head to life. And that is from Danny Wu at Canva. To me, that sounds like it's more AI creating the final design solution and doing everything for that matter. But Mr. Wu does argue against that in the next sentence. We believe that human creativity is at the core of design. AI will take it to new heights, not replace it. Our AI tools and features are designed to supercharge the creative process. But earlier, he said that AI is at the core of the editing and the design process. And now he says that the human creativity is at the core. So I'm kind of confused. But what do you think? What do you think about AI? And what do you think about all of these comments in today's video? If you want to actually remain creative and not rely on AI, just click that video on screen. But until next time, guys, design your future today. Peace.